G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru and you've reached part four of my Python quick tip series. Um, today we're gonna to be focusing on working with strings. So in this session, I'll show you some functions, some methods and some ways you can deal with strings such as formatting. So strings, we actually saw them in part one already as a data type or a class. Um, and we're gonna focus on this class specifically today. So what are strings? Um, so essentially they're text, um, but they can be in the form of a number in the form of text, for example. So you can see here that if you use double apostrophes or single apostrophes around a piece of data, it becomes a string, essentially. You can convert other things to strings, which is quite useful, because there's a lot of formatting techniques that strings have, which other object types don't, such as numbers. Um, so we can look for substrings, for example, in a big number. Whereas in a number, we can't necessarily look for that sub piece of the number as easily. So you can convert things like floats, uh, integers, and booleans, and you can see the outcome here. It's important to note that you do want to be careful when you use a single or a double apostrophe, because whilst either methods work, you will run into problems sometimes if you use single apostrophes or double apostrophes in the actual string itself. You can see here on the right that I've used a single apostrophe in the middle of a string, and as a result, it actually stops the string and thinks that the STRI is a string and the NG is a, a non a prescribed piece of data so it's looking for like a function or a method which it's not finding so it's thinking it's an invalid syntax so what we can do actually is use what's called escape sequences these can be quite handy when you're writing raw strings um, so you can see here if I use a backslash um, in this case uh, you can see that it actually allows it to become a part of the string uh, but sometimes we can't use this sometimes we do need to use other techniques um, there's a lot of escape characters as they call them in python um, there's, there's a whole list here but there's also a lot of things online that you can use as well um, but what's really important is that you can use what's called raw strings so what happens here is you put just an r in front of the string uh, before the apostrophes and as a result it will allow all characters within the string to just be normal characters so this includes um, apostrophes and it also includes um, things like uh, backslashes and forward slashes in file paths, which can be really useful. So when you're dealing with file paths in Python, it's highly recommended you use um, raw strings instead of strings. And you can see here the result um, using a standard file path. You can slice and index strings just like you can with lists. So you can, you can see here I'm just calling on index zero of the word here and getting one letter. But you can also slice, um, so you can take the first three characters or all the characters after a certain index. You can also stride, um, as we showed in the last uh, tutorial, with lists. As well as this, you can apply the length function, which we saw in part one, um, which essentially just tells you the length of the string. You can also change the case, as we saw in part one, um, to upper, lower, or title case. And you can also reverse the string, but in this case, we use a special syntax to do this. So we do an unlimited slice with a negative one stride, and this will actually just turn the string around, which is a really handy little shortcut that a lot of people don't know about. You can also use the find method on strings if you want to find the index. So this uh, of a particular character or word. So it will return the first occurrence of that word and the index at the first letter of that, that um, sequence. So it's a little bit like using the index command in um, a list. You can also optionally add a start and an endpoint if you were to look, look between a particular range of characters to find the index it occurs at. You can also count the number of times something occurs um, using the method uh, uh, count, sorry, I think I've written find there, but it's actually count, um, that's a typo. Um, so you can see here that I'm looking for uh, the amount of times the character W occurs in the string Where's Wally? And we know that that's two, so we can see that it's two. The replace method is quite useful as well. So in this one, you can look for a character to substitute with another character, and you can either do unlimited numbers by not specifying the count, um, which is an optional argument, or you can add a number for how many times you want to do it. So you can see here that I'm looking in the, the string Where's Wally? and I'm replacing W with T. Um, if I did it unlimited times, um, it would be there's tally, uh, which we don't want. We just want to do it once, and then we get there's Wally instead. You can also add strings together. Um, this is handy for basic concatenation. Uh, it isn't really suitable for more advanced concatenation. Say you have a list of 30 strings, and you want to combine them all with spaces between all the words, when we're obviously not going to want to type it out like this, because that'll take a very long time. 
In this case, we can use the join command or the, the join method. Uh, so we can basically take a list of strings and then we specify the separator dot join as the method and then we put our string in brackets and it will go and put a space or a separator between all the words in the list and join them together which is really useful. Likewise we can also split strings apart so we can use the dot split method and then we can specify the separating character that we split by and then how many times we want to split. So you can see here I'm splitting up the phrase how dare you, uh, people might know where that's from. Um, and then we're splitting it up by the space, but we're just doing it once. So we get how, and then we get dare you with a space in the middle. We can also use R split, which is basically right split. So this splits from the other direction. So the, the previous version split splits from the left, whereas R split goes from the back. So in this case, we get how dare and you. Strip um, is also a handy method for cleaning up strings. If, you, if you're working with some data coming from Excel, and you know some of the fields have spaces in the front and the back of them, you may want to clean these up sometimes. We call this the white space. So in this case, we can use the L or the R strip method, and we can also specify what we want to strip as well, if it's a word or a number, for example. So if you want to strip out a prefix from the front of some strings, um, you could specify the prefix instead. But you can see here the various impacts of using strip, R strip, and L strip on various strings. So you can see that if I use strip, it literally just condenses the white space from both ends, and L strip and R strip condense the white space from the left and the right end of the string respectively. I've just added a full stop to the results there so you can see the position of where the white space is. I'm not going to cover it in this tutorial, it's quite advanced, but F strings are worth looking into if you need to deal with specific formatting of text. This is quite a handy method um, if you're trying to substitute specific things. So you can say, see here that I'm building up a phrase that's saying what today's date is. And rather than having to convert the date time with a format to a string, I can just specify a format within an F string instead, so, or a formatted string. Again, I'm not going to cover this, but there's a technique called positional formatting as well, um, where you can actually specify various places for pieces of string or variables to be inserted in a common phrase, which is really handy when you're building a program that has a lot of pre-prescribed messages that you need to insert variables into, such as usernames. Regular expressions are also really helpful, but again, they're a bit advanced, so I won't cover them in this series, but um, essentially you can use this to detect whether strings satisfy certain conditions through having particular arrangements of characters, such as numbers, letters, case. Um, so they're really helpful in detecting patterns or finding out if something complies. A really common use for regular expressions or regex is passwords. So if you're trying to find out if a password is strong enough, and say you need one number, six characters, and an upper, uppercase letter. Regex is fantastic for finding out if this is gonna comply. So that's all for strings. Um, there's a lot of ways you can deal with them. Hopefully that gives you some techniques. Um, in the next uh, tutorial, we're gonna be covering how to define some custom functions, and then moving on to iteration from there. So hopefully you found that useful, and um, feel free to leave any comments if you're enjoying it, but um, hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, take care.